Ladies and gentle soars, welcome to Assessing Survival, the series where we take creatures from both our world and fiction, placing them in different periods throughout history, as well as fantastical settings from outside reality. In today's episode, we will be taking about 30 to 50 feral hogs, or Sus scrophus domesticus, and placing them in the Mesozoic, specifically late Jurassic North America, around 150 to 145 million years ago, where they will interact with animals found in the Morrison Formation. We'll explore how these livestock animals gone feral, notorious for disrupting the ecosystems of North America and many other places, hold up in a totally different environment. If the good people of the state of Texas can't wipe them out, maybe some dinosaurs can. We will assess them using four different categories. Each category will receive a score, and the combined scores will give us a survival assessment score. 1 to 3 being they cannot survive, 4 to 6 being they can survive but with great to moderate difficulty, and more than 7 being they will survive with little to no difficulty. The categories are environment suitability, food sources, strengths and weaknesses, and threats and competition. And as always, we will include a speculative evolution section at the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's get into those categories. Environment suitability. Average global temperatures during the Jurassic were estimated to be about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, 9 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, higher than present day temperatures, resulting in lush vegetation and extensive forest at even higher latitudes. However, seasonal fluctuations in temperature were not nearly as dramatic as today. Wild hogs are incredibly adaptable animals, thriving in a variety of environments across the world today. From forests and grasslands to marshes and agricultural lands, the most obvious example of their adaptability can be seen in the western and southern United States, as well as recently along our border with Canada, where the combination of purposeful release into their wild by colonials as well as escaped livestock has resulted in the explosion of their population, and a likely permanent establishment of their species. Hogs are vulnerable to heat stress because they do not have sweat glands, and have a thick layer of subcutaneous fat, which makes it difficult for them to cool down. They primarily rely on panting and seeking shade or wallowing in mud or water to regulate their body temperature. Despite the Jurassic spike in heat, as well as their vulnerability to this increase, heat stress is seen far less in wild hogs as opposed to domestic hogs because they have access to shade as well as natural bodies of water, and we actually see them thrive more in hotter regions than we do in cold regions, though they certainly do just fine in more frigid temperatures too. I can really only see wild hogs struggling in places of extreme heat and no shade in the Jurassic, such such as deserts, which they rarely venture far into anyway. Environment suitability score, 9 out of 10. Food sources. Wild hogs are opportunistic omnivores. This gives them access to a wide range of food sources. They feed on plant materials like roots, tubers, seeds, and fruits, as well as animal matter such as small mammals, reptiles, insects, eggs, and carrion. In Jurassic North America, I don't see them having too much difficulty coming across these same sources of food. The flora of the Jurassic period included things such as ferns, cycads, and ginkgos. Wild hogs would likely consume a mix of these, focusing on roots, tubers, and nuts. Their ability to digest these tougher plant materials would allow them to have access to resources less available to other animals. Of course, there are also a variety of reptiles, small mammals, and insects that the hog would eat opportunistically, as well as the carrion from corpses left by larger predators. An interesting possibility is the mutualistic relationship with large herbivorous dinosaurs. By following large herbivores like sauropods and stegosaurs, they could forage on the disturbed soil and vegetation, benefiting from the larger animals' feeding activities. This behavior is seen in modern ecosystems, where the smaller animals follow large grazers to access disturbed resources. Additionally, wild hogs forage along Long water bodies, digging for aquatic plants and invertebrates. The Jurassic period's numerous rivers, lakes, and wetlands would offer ample opportunities for this type of foraging. Food sources score 9 out of 10. Strengths and Weaknesses Wild hogs possess several strengths that would aid in their survival in the Jurassic period. They are known for their intelligence, strong social structures, and remarkable adaptability. Their tusks are useful for digging, foraging, and self-defense, while their thick hides offer some protection against predators. Living in groups called sounders, typically composed of related sows and their offspring, wild hogs benefit from mutual protection and cooperative foraging. This social structure would be beneficial in the Jurassic, helping them fend off smaller predators and alert each other to danger. Males, or boars, are solitary, though can and often will form small groups with other males 
males in dangerous environments. Their intelligence is another significant strength, with demonstrated problem-solving abilities and adaptable behavior. This cognitive flexibility would be crucial for navigating the unfamiliar environments of the Jurassic. However, wild hogs do have some weaknesses. They are not particularly fast runners with top speeds of 30 to 40 kilometers per hour, 18 to 25 miles per hour, which may be slower than many Jurassic predators. Additionally, their eyesight is relatively poor, making them vulnerable to ambush predators. Hogs can vary greatly in size with the largest individuals, though they are exceptional, pushing 700 pounds and reaching 7 feet or almost 2 meters in length. But even if we said that all the wild hogs were this size, they still wouldn't be much to scoff at, relatively speaking. Many of the animals that will be preying upon them will be several magnitudes larger than them. Their high reproductive rate, with large litters and multiple breeding cycles per year, would help sustain their population despite predation. The gestation period for hogs is incredibly short, generally only taking 120 days or about 3 months. They also grow incredibly fast. Both male and female feral hogs are sexually mature as young as 4-5 to five months of age, with most boars reaching puberty within the first year of life, participating in breeding by 12-18 to 18 months of age. Wild hogs also have an impressive ability to heal from their injuries, thanks to their robust immune system. However, their lack of specialized defensive adaptations puts them at a disadvantage compared to many Jurassic habitats. There is one defensive adaptation that might help them out just a little bit. Mature male feral hogs developed a thick subcutaneous layer called the shield or shoulder plate. This layer, located over the muscles in the lateral shoulder area, is a secondary sexual characteristic unique to their species. It is believed to protect males during fights for mating opportunities with females in estrus and could prove a pretty valuable defense in fights with smaller predators. Though they certainly don't look it, wild hogs and many other suids are proficient swimmers and can swim for hours before getting tired. This will be useful in expanding their range, especially across bodies of water. Despite their shortcomings in size and defenses, their ability to reproduce so rapidly shoots their score up for this category dramatically, giving them a strengths and weaknesses score of 8 out of 10. Threats and Competition this is where things start to look a little hairy for our wild hogs. A large part of the success of wild hogs we see in North America is the lack of predators well equipped to prey on them. 145 million years ago, this is simply no longer the case. Jurassic North America was a home to a menagerie of carnivorous theropods that will lick their lips when they see these delicious bastards show up. The largest of predators such as Torvosaurus or Saurophaganax are more likely to spend their energy hunting larger prey items, though I can't imagine they'd be above grabbing a wild hog if they wanted to. But the other predators of the Morrison, such as Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Marchosaurus, and Tenicolegrius would all easily and readily take advantage of this new source of food. While wild hogs are known to defend themselves vigorously, and their thick hides and sharp tusks would provide some protection, the sheer size and strength of Jurassic predators would be a constant threat. Wait a minute. He kind of looks like a sizable meal. Come here, I'm gonna eat you! I'm bigger than you, I'm higher in the food chain! Get in my belly! Come on! You're lucky, wee man! Ah. Can I have a hug? In terms of competition, there aren't really a lot of animals vying for their preferred food source this being roughage like roots, tubers, and nuts. And given what we know about the similar sized dinosaurs, most of them are feeding on the more leafy parts of plant matter. The only animals that we know of that would be eating the same things as the hogs may be invertebrates, rhynchocephalians, and some early mammals, all of which wouldn't really hold up a torch to a wild hog. They will still be competing with those dinosaurs to eat foliage though, as it still makes up a large enough part of the wild hog's diet. The many ornithischians of the Morrison formation, such as Dryosaurus and Nanosaurus, would be no match for wild hogs, as they are many times heavier and more powerful than them. They likely wouldn't butt heads with much larger animals in their niche, such as Camptosaurus and the few Stegosaurs in the Morrison Formation, as we don't really see wild hogs showing much aggression towards larger herbivores today. And, like I said before, they very well may follow herds of larger dinosaurs to take advantage of the disturbed soil and vegetation they would leave behind. The fiercest competition would come from Ankylosaurids like Mimora pelta and Gargoyleosaurus, as these animals are very similar in size and weight as the wild hogs. Though these early ankylosaurids may lack the tail clubs of their Cretaceous descendants, they certainly don't lack the armor. The bone plating of these armored dinosaurs would give angry hogs a hard time were they to attack, many of which are long and pointed and could do some serious damage to the hogs. Threats and competition score 7 out of 10. 
which brings us to their survival assessment score. Their overall score comes out to an 8.5 out of 10. Wild hogs with their adaptability, intelligence, crazy reproductive rates, and strong social structures would certainly find ways to thrive in the Jurassic period. Their omnivorous diet would allow them to exploit a wide range of food sources, and their reproductive rate would help them sustain their population despite intense predation. They're probably not going to be nearly as successful as they are in the southern United States, but they can definitely establish themselves in the ecosystem, even if it is lower on the food chain. They would face significant threats from larger predators and competition for resources, but their strengths would give them a solid chance of survival. I don't think they really need to evolve to survive, but that's what we came here for, isn't it? Speculative Evolution For this episode's Specivo segment, we're actually going to be showcasing the creations of our Discord members. For those of you who don't know, we ran a competition for the members of the Discord server for a chance to have their Specivo featured in this video. So, all of the following Specivo entries are drawn and written by members of our Discord. Sus Gigantius Morrisoni, the giant pig of the Morrison, by Crazy Dave, or Doodoo Moment on DeviantArt. Reaching lengths of up to 3.5 to 4.5 meters and heights of nearly 2 meters at the shoulder, the giant pig has thick, leathery skin covered in sparse or sometimes no hair that provides protection against both parasites and predators. Their tusks are elongated and robust, useful for both foraging and as defensive weapons. They also sport thickened skulls. Males in particular have larger domes for intraspecific competition. Living in such a hostile environment, the pig started to stick together for more security, which eventually led to herding behavior, traveling in herds of up to 30 to 70 individuals. These herds consist of three to five adult males, called bulls, females called cows, and their offspring called calves. The stronger and more aggressive males will hold positions in the front, middle, and back of the herd, guiding them to food sources and safe resting areas. Herding provides safety in numbers, reducing the chances of individuals falling prey to many predators of the Morrison. Despite their size, these giant pigs are surprisingly quick. They can reach speeds of up to 25 miles per hour in short bursts, which is essential for evading predators. Their sturdy legs and wide hooves enable them to navigate the varied terrain of the Morrison formation. Defense against predators such as Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus is in important for the pig. Their primary line of defense is the herd structures. Their primary line of defense is the herd structure. Adults will form a protective circle around the young, making booming noises and presenting their large tusks. These pigs can become highly aggressive, charging at predators with surprising speed and using their tusks and thick skulls to inflict damage. They also use their sheer size to their advantage, employing their bulk to knock down or trample small predators. Flumen Porcus, or the River Pig, by Zielzaka on Discord. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he said I could call him David if that doesn't work or Ziel on DeviantArt. This creature is a descendant of the wild hogs in the Jurassic Formation, adapted to lead an aquatic lifestyle similar to that of the hippopotamus. Why did this animal evolve this way? Well, the ancestors of this animal, due to the threat of large predators, learned to hide in the water and eventually stay underwater. They constantly remained on the water's edge and over time, began to adapt to a more aquatic lifestyle. Lumen porcus feeds on mainly algae, eating it from the surface of the water, but also diving to consume algae from the bottom. And night, it can go on to land to eat plants, for which it has flat molars and premolars. Its front teeth can be used as filters to separate algae from debris and to pluck plants at the water's edge. It lives mainly near rivers and lakes, and thanks to its physiology and subcutaneous fat layer, it can both dive and push off from the bottom of the water, similar to a hippopotamus. It leads a herd lifestyle, dominated by the alpha male, who, when possible, organizes tournaments. These tournaments involve opening their mouths at each other, growling loudly, and showing their fangs at the corners of their mouths is a form of intimidation. Despite this interspecific aggression, they are very timid. However, if the target is smaller than their own body, they can attack and tear apart a small predator or even a careless herbivore. Females are much smaller than males and do not have fangs, which makes them easy prey for predators. However, females are much more agile and mobile than males, and females with young will usually live away from the herd. Males can reach 180 centimeters at the withers, while females can reach only 150 centimeters at the withers. Ludodentus aprum, or the mud tooth, by the creature den, who is the actual winner of the competition. 
or the Creature Den on Instagram. They are the descendants of boars who sought refuge in dried riverbeds among craggy mountains. They are enormous animals that feed on whatever they can find, from carrion to plants to roots, and aren't opposed to eating infants from rival pods. Really, they'll eat anything that fits in their mouths. They're not picky. Their rotund bodies are quite reminiscent of hippos, though they are usually covered in a decent layer of dried mud, which keeps them from sunburning as well as dissuading large predators from attacking, lest they like grabbing mouthfuls of dirt. Despite this, they are a common target for large theropods like wandering Allosaurus. In a strange way, they also mirror Triceratops, fending off against predators in protective circles with, with huge spear-like protrusions. Another factor that sets these beasts apart from many others is their intellect. Blunt teeth are about as mentally competent as modern chimps, and have complex social dynamics with no single leader, but more a group of elders who control the pod. These elders determine when they should migrate to the next mud hole, who gets priority of resources, or who is eligible to breed. This rulemaking often leads to pods having extremely diverse social behaviors and cultural norms. Pods are also very territorial, as suitable mud beds aren't always easy to find, and being pushed out into deep rivers poses a lot of problems for these still mostly terrestrial animals. Because of this, altercations with rival pods usually end in devastating wars, where one pod will try to completely annihilate or drive out the other. It is extremely rare for pods to merge, but on occasion, when there is a lack of healthy genetics or members, small pods will collide and unify. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Of course, if you have any ideas for another episode, leave them in the comments, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to talk to me and some other members of the audience, join the Discord and introduce yourself. If you have it in your heart, join the Patreon or become a channel member to help the channel grow into something bigger and better. I also have an Instagram you can follow if you'd like to, though I don't post much about the channel on it. Big shout out to our patrons, some of which include Green Turret. Big shout out to our patrons, some of which include Fluffy Dino, Lex Gun, Galactic Narwhal, Rhubarb 600, Green Turret, Tyler Sparks, The Wan Kaiser, Mr. Matt, and Skadu Master. Thank you once again, and see you next time, dorks. Thank you.